This is a 10 minute presentation discussing the core issues in nonlinear rheology of entangled polymers, a subject we have tirelessly worked on in the past decade. Here are four representative publications on the subject from our lab. We think to study nonlinear rheology of entangled polymers, we must address these two central questions. One, where does a fine deformation come from? In other words, what causes a fine deformation to take place? Since we're dealing with entangled polymers, the second question is, when does molecular deformation cease to increase? We think any study to learn about nonlinear response of entangled polymers must address these two questions because the issue of primary concern in any scientific inquiry is to think about and address the issue of this causality. So you wonder, in the past theoretical descriptions, did we take care of this issue of causality? In other words, did we ask why a fine deformation occurs? If we did not, how did we know when it ends. So suppose you have a large deformation at high rate so that to make 100% deformation given by H over V is very short compared to the reputation time. So this is the limit of high Weisenberg number. The question to ask is can elastic deformation last for a period as long as the reputation time? involving a strand of the Weissenberg number. Well, uh, untangled polymer, if you magnify a million times, will look like this picture of a ball of rice noodle. And experiment tells us that this elastic deformation does not last very long. It is elastic initially, and then the response changes because eventually the system flows. And this transition point we, is the point we call the yield point. This is the familiar stress overshoot phenomenon. We think that the behavior prior to this maximum is dominantly elastic. And beyond this maximum, the system transfers to a state of flow because of the following experiment that you can do. You can do a elastic recovery experiment. Share your sample any point before this maximum and let go stress-free. You find your sample returns to the equilibrium position. Conversely, if it is sheared beyond this maximum and when you let this go stress-free, the sample will not return, indicating irrecoverable deformation occurs beyond the maximum. So what was causing the elastic deformation? And how does it transition to flow? If we can build a theory for nonlinear response of entangled polymers from first principles, then such a theory will be able to describe the causality and answer the question of when you have a fine deformation, when the fine deformation is giving in to irreversible deformation. Well, if such a theory is not available and we have to construct a model, then this model must be based on a realistic physical picture. And this picture must address the issue of causality. What would be a candidate to describe nonlinear response of untangled polymers. Well, we have some experience about how to describe polymeric systems. For example, if you have a cross-linked rubber, then indeed a fine deformation is a good description because the strands between cross-links always survive. Untangled polymer is similar to a cross-linked rubber because 
of the long chains that cannot move away from each other due to the chain uncrossability, which also is the reason for the chain entanglement. And this produces a transient crosslink effect. So within rotation time, the entanglement strength survives. And therefore, the initial response of an entangled melt is going to be a fine deformation. But this elastic deformation cannot last forever because during the deformation, the intra-chain retraction forces grows. And it cannot grow without bound. And we think that the point of yield is reached when the force, the intra-chain force, grow to be as large as the intermolecular gripping force. So it is important to figure out how this intermolecular force depend on the rate, on the time, and the strength. Well, currently, there is no analytical theory that describes this intermolecular gripping force. And therefore, the field of nonlinear polymer rheology still faces a formidable challenge. In the past, we have used the tube model to describe nonlinear rheology of polymers. Well, this model tries to bypass the challenge of addressing causality by describing intermolecular force passively in terms of a smooth tube. Well, such a treatment really disregarded the fact that intermolecular forces are highly hydrogenous and point-like. So we think that this uh, mean field approach and the assumption of uh, a fine deformation of the tube really oversimplifies the physical picture to the point that it actually failed to address the issue of causality. In other words, it did not devise any account to address the core questions in nonlinear rheology of entangled polymers. That is, where a fine deformation comes from, when does a fine deformation end, when chain deformation ceases to grow, well, the starting point of the two model makes it difficult to allow the picture of yielding, that is, the loss of entanglement, as a result of external forces and external deformation, because the tube is always there. It could offer some quantitative information, including stress overshoot, because it computes stresses from the deformation of the primitive chain. But this calculation does not perceive how the stress response is correlated with any change in the structure of the entanglement network. It actually describes a challenging problem of steady flow behavior in terms of equilibrium relaxation spectrum. So we think that we need an alternative theory to be developed to describe the causality, to address the issue of where a fine deformation comes from, how it is replaced by irrecoverable deformation. This may take a while to achieve, but this should be the ultimate goal in searching for a realistic description of entangled polymers under large deformation.